Hey everybody, welcome to the South African post-match press conference. We have with us uh, head coach Razi Erasmus and captain Sia Kulisi. We have uh, simultaneous translation, so again, observe the channels for the devices. And please, I'll only take questions when you have a microphone. Okay, I might open up the, uh, open up the questions. Razi, uh, not the results you probably wanted today. Uh, where do you feel you might have uh, lost or, or won that game? No, I think they won it. I, I don't think we lost it. I think, you know, two tries to one, uh, they definitely deserve to win the game. Uh, if we concede, I think, 11 penalties to two, uh, you're going to struggle to beat New Zealand. Uh, quite a decide they are. So I think discipline was our biggest downfall. And then obviously um, them scoring two tries and we only won. Um, I don't think we can moan about anything but saying well done to them. Here, the front. Um, in those first 20 minutes, uh, guys at front football, uh, forcing them into errors with a rush defence. What do you think went wrong in terms of getting points out of that? Uh, well, obviously the one kick was against the poles, uh, and which would have been, I think, 6-0 or 6-3, I'm not sure what exactly. So that was obviously an opportunity. And, and later in the game, I think when the score was 17-13, those three points could have been really vital. Uh, but look, now give all credit to New Zealand um, uh, for them to, uh, when we had territorial and, and scoreboard pressure in a way at some stage, you know, when they had that one opportunity to pounce, they pounced, uh, and then uh, the, the, the scoreboard pressure re uh, reversed, and we had to play a little bit more in our half, and then they just started kicking little topper kicks and, and pinned us back in our own half, and we struggled to get out of there. So, you know, that shows experience, that shows a world-class team, and, and we struggled to handle that. So um, I think it's a combination of them putting pressure on us and us not handling the pressure really well. Rassi, Rassi. Hang on. Rassi. Hang on. Excuse me. Hang on. We're still translating. Okay, thank you. Rassi, can the box fight back from this to, to win the World Cup? Yes, I think we can fight back. I think even in the game we fought back. You know, off time to be 17-3 down. Um, I've seen uh, South African teams get 50 points when they uh, that that amount of points down against New Zealand. So to be down 73 and get back into I think 17-13, whatever the case may be, and being in the 22 close to scoring a try, and then just one or two great turnovers by New Zealand. Uh, so I think there were stages that we really fought back well. Um, we got a few then injuries late in the game and we couldn't get guys like Franz Stein and those kind of guys onto the field, so it was tough. Peter Steffs also got a knock to his knee, so uh, at the end uh, there was a few guys who I thought could give impact, which we had to hold back a little bit. Uh, but surely, um, you know, if you grouped with New Zealand in a pool, uh, you've got a good chance of not going undefeated through your pool. Uh, you go, and then you have to fight back and, and try and get to the final uh, for the first time in history by uh, not being unbeaten. So we have to go that route now. Question? Yeah. Uh, Rossi, uh, two knock-ons in the first half. Over here. Yes. Rossi, two knock-ons in the first half, one from Duane and one to Handre that uh, led to tries. Would, how would you have preferred your defense to react to those two knock-ons? Are you disappointed in how they reacted in training or in the way you have been training? Yeah, um, uh, that's a difficult thing um, to uh, shut New Zealand down from set play, uh, line-outs, scrums, a uh, kicking game. It's, it's, I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's easier because you can, you can plan your defense. But um, most of the tries come from, from turnovers and from, from bad kicks. Um, and, and because you, when you knock on a ball, you're just not set in defense and, and obviously different guys in different positions and you get a prop next to a lock or a lock next to a center uh, and they're out of position and it's always scramble defense whereas from a set face, you know, guys got certain roles and responsibilities. So um, that's why sometimes when you play against New Zealand, uh, the, when you don't have as much ball, you don't you don't give so many turnovers because uh, that's a bigger source. And and if uh, today was a classic example, the few times where we actually played with the ball, those were the two times where they actually scored tries. Uh, of course, we weren't organised on defence, so it's um, they just potent with that, and uh, it shows their class. Uh, even with two really young wingers, 
uh, when I say young, they, they were all super rugby champions, but they are young in terms of test match rugby, and they were just unbelievably, they pounced really well. And uh, no, listen, New Zealand deserved to win, even if those tries were from turnovers. They just really were good on the day. Razi, um, if you, um, sorry, if, if Pool A goes as with the rankings, this puts you on course for a potential quarter final with Ireland. Given your own connections with Ireland, your coach's connections with Ireland, is that a game you'd relish? And do you think that the fact that you have so many connections with Ireland gives you an advantage if that fixture was to take place? Yeah, we've got an uh, important game against Italy along the way. I know uh, we've got Canada and, and, and Namibia also, but I think the Italy game is a game in the last two years we've had a slippery game against Italy, so I, I must just mention them before we, we start talking quarterfinals now because this game definitely uh, put some pressure in us in that specific game. We um, would have loved to win this game to, to get some momentum going into quarterfinals. Uh, but I tell you, uh, Scotland... Ireland, Wales, uh, it's so many um, teams that can currently do well on the day. Just if you look at between Wales and England and two consecutive weekends, how they smashed one another. And even New Zealand and Australia on two consecutive weekends, how the score just changed from 40 points to the one to 40 points to the other one. Um, and again today, you know, uh, I think I wouldn't say the scoreboard flatter us. But I think uh, here at the end, if New Zealand scored another try, it would have been a good hiding. Uh, but there was all, almost a, a time in the game where we also could have m really made the game really, really close. So there's such small margins where you can get a good hiding or you really can claw it back. So to answer you, I wouldn't prefer Ireland or Scotland. I'm not really sure. Uh, Gregor is a great coach. Uh, Joe is a great coach. Obviously, I know the Ireland players really well. But they know us as well, you know. So I don't. I'm not sure who that, who, who would have the advantage in that regard. See, so just away from. Sorry. See, so just from a player's perspective, how you guys reacted after that second try seemed a bit flat. Were you a bit shocked by the way the All Blacks fought back? No, we weren't shocked. I think we, <coughs> we they they handled our king game very well. You know, everything that we threw at them, and they were. It looked like they were always ready for everything that we threw at them and we yeah we didn't execute when we had the opportunity like coach said every time we were attacking you know we make a mistake you know we thought we were going forward and they'll just take the opportunity and we know that they're very good of turnovers um, but all in all they really deserve today they really played well and uh, I can't fault them in any way Razi um there were suspicions that um, you know the All Blacks were a bit vulnerable, that they maybe weren't the, the team they, they were four years ago. What, what do you think tonight said about that? And um, Do you think they sent a bit of a message or do you think that there's still weaknesses there to exploit? The All Blacks? No, look, look. I think people must remember we I think, four or five in the world, you know, so I, I don't think we at this stage uh, the benchmark to, to compare teams with, you know, I think when you get to the likes of England and, and, and Wales and Ireland, uh, I think New Zealand will have some stiff competition going through to the final still. Uh, there's, there's teams that can handle uh, their kicking game and the specific things they do. Uh, they might handle a little bit better than we did on the day. We've played them now four times in the last, or, or eight times in the last two years, or six times in the last two years, so we know one another fairly well. Uh, but they definitely, for me, I think the favourite. Uh, for for the World Cup, and they've always been. We've never had a doubt about that. We just feel we, we we're creeping a little bit closer uh, in 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 challenging them. But um, they they will have different challenges against teams like England, Ireland, Wales, who's, who bring different threats to the party. You know, we bring some physicality. Sometimes they handle our ball pretty well today. They handle our scrum well. They handle our kicking game well. But you you play teams like Wales and England. They've got totally different strengths. You know, so. Um, but by all means, I think New Zealand's the favourite, without a doubt. But uh, they'll have different tactical challenges, I think, against the Northern Hemisphere teams, which will be interesting to see how they handle that. But I think I'm going to stop commenting on them. We've got, a, we've got a hell of a lot to sort out ourselves. Rossi, to your left. Do you feel, based on then what you've seen tonight, and when you think back to that Wellington test, did the All Blacks hide a few more things from you than maybe you'd initially thought? 
No, I don't think so. Um, I think, you know, as I say, the tries were 2-1 uh, and, and, and they, the tries were scored from mistakes we made. You know, I don't think there was... Ex you could clearly see the first 10 minutes what their plan was, how to unravel our defence was obviously they kicked two up and unders from set phases right under our poles. That was obviously the way to try and unravel our defence to uh, bombs they kick right under our poles, which Cheslin really handled well. Uh, then they had two little chip kicks over our defensive line. But then I thought really there were times when we, uh, about 15, 20 minutes into the first half, where we really put them under pressure of our defence system. Uh, but I, I think the runaway, not the runaway try, but the try um, which they scored from our uh, mistake, obviously then we have to start playing catch-up rugby against them. And that's when people forget as well, not people forget, but as well as New Zealand attack, they defend as well. And the moment they get scoreboard pressure on you and you have to play your, your half in these conditions, you know, they just really make it tough. And then, uh, you know, um, Aaron and, and, and um, Perinara pinch you back in your half and, and, and they pile the pressure onto you. So um, I don't really think they unraveled our defence. I think they, they, they scored from our mistakes, uh, but their team just know how to ramp up the pressure the moment they head on the scoreboard. Okay, we take a question at the back. Rossi at the back, yeah. Uh, just your thoughts on the battle at scrum time and the breakdown, how that was officiated and perhaps where you guys went wrong or, or what, what calls were made? Yeah, um, as I said, you know, I think the penalty count was 11-2, so we, we, did a, we did 11 things wrong. So we'll have to go and fix it. Uh, and, 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 and they only did two things wrong, uh, which is unbelievably well disciplined by them. Uh, so we'll have to really work hard and fix it. If you, if you give 11 penalties away, it's either 40 metres by kick uh, relief to the touch uh, by them, or it's three points by Bowden or, or, or Richie or whoever kicks for balls for them, or it's a 40 metre gain for a line-out or a scrum or whatever. So we can't afford 11 penalties or 10 penalties and only get two for ourselves, you know. So um, uh, that battle we lost. That battle we lost. Uh, Final question here, thank you. Uh, Rassi, is uh, Chesson Kobe injured? Did he pick up an injury tonight? No, he got cramps. He did, uh, oh, sorry, I can't see who was asking. Just no, he just, got, he just got cramps. We got an injury to uh, Trevor Niakane, uh, a calf injury, not a knee injury, other calf injury. Um, that's the only injury we really got into the game. And, and uh, yeah, we couldn't get Franz Stein on because uh, then Chesson got cramps at the end and also Peter Steff got some cramps at the end. So we had to keep one guy on the bench for if those guys couldn't complete the game. But that's the only real injury worry is uh, Trevor, which I think it's, it's fairly serious. But it must be a relief that Ches Ches isn't OK. Obviously, the way he played tonight, he, he's really unfortunate not to, not to get a try, wasn't he? Yes, yes, and no, I think you, you, you know, I think all the guys tried really hard. We played against a world-class team who really played well. Our guys wasn't lack of effort; it was a lack of execution, uh, and that's always if it's a lack of execution, the finger must normally get pointed back to the coach because if the effort's there, the coach did something wrong during the work because the effort was there. And Ches, Ches, uh, Cheson was definitely one of the guys who put up his hand uh, and said, "Listen, I'm, I'm ready to take these guys on," and he was a great example. Thank you. Thanks, okay, thank you, everybody. We have New Zealand uh, straight out to stay where you are. New Zealand not far away. Thank you. Thank you.